In the early 70s, the Miami Dolphins were a portrait of perfection. Following two consecutive Super Bowl titles in 1972 and 73, the Dolphins were intent on capturing a third. However, in 1974, Miami wasn't the only team flying its colors proudly. The Oakland Raiders were to pro football what Blackbeard the Pirate and his motley crew were to the open seas. And the silver and black's ominous image was frighteningly evident when they hosted the Dolphins in the opening round of the playoffs. When we came out for that game, there was more excitement in the stadium than I ever heard anywhere or felt anywhere. And everyone had a black handkerchief and from the pre-game warm-ups, they were wired in Oakland. We were playing the Dolphins and it was going to be big. I'm excited, the team's excited, we're going to get them and all this stuff. And we kick off, you know, the opening kickoff crescendo, you know, the thing, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Whap, we kick the ball. They get the ball and boom, all the way back. He runs, I think it was Nat Moore, ran it back 100 yards. <laughs> and now here we were, you know. Black Sunday, Raiders, Revenge, Dolphins, get them in Oakland. Fans, crazy, team, crazy, good, going to do it. And the opening kickoff in our park, and they run it back all the way. So now it's seven to nothing, you know, and the fans haven't even sat down yet. The Raiders' fortunes went from bad to worse when their explosive passing attack failed to ignite. But while the offense let opportunities slip away, the Raiders' defense took a firm hold on the Dolphins' elusive running game. Oakland took pressure off its struggling offense by placing it on Miami's. And when the first quarter ended, the opening kickoff return remained the only score. Raiders stuck with their passing game despite its early failure, and the all-out assault of the end zone eventually paid off. Charlie Smith's touchdown put Oakland on the board, and as the game wore on, the Raiders continued to focus their attention on the Dolphins' secondary. Fred Bolitnikoff's circus catch was ruled out of bounds, but Oakland's ringmaster called for a repeat performance. Ball on the 13, second and 10. Stay with that. Looks left. Throws right. Bolitnikoff, a leaping catch. Touchdown! Trailing for the first time, 14 to 10. Miami's Don Shula refueled his team's competitive fires. The fleet-footed Paul Warfield's touchdown helped put the Dolphins back on top, 19 to 14. However, in the fourth quarter, the Raiders answered the score with their own speed burner, wide receiver Cliff Branch, number 21. We're gonna let you go take it. Right. Well, I think you can get the round outside. I'm going outside him. I can run under, you know. I can take it that Good job. Good job. They're going to the air now. Here's the deep one. The Brown. Deep, deep. He's got it. Branch's 72-yard touchdown gave Oakland the lead once more. But with time becoming a factor, Miami called upon its punishing running attack to eat up both yardage and the clock on its way to the Raider end zone. Back Larry Zonka muscled his way to the Oakland 23, setting up pathback Benny Malone's Herculean effort that gave Miami a 26 to 21 lead. <music> Jim 
Just two minutes remained after Malone's touchdown. And while the time left seemed insufficient to the grieving Raiders, it seemed like an eternity to the concerned Dolphins. I remember thinking that I wished on the scoring play that we had uh, that put us ahead. I was concerned because there was so much time left. I knew that Stabler had the capacity to take that ball back down the field, and he did. When you get in a pressure situation like that where uh, every, everything's riding on a single play or two, there's no one that you'd rather have involved in that play than Kenny Stabler. He has the uncanny knack of putting a ball uh, between people and between hands and, and just being able to slip things in there from all different angles, and that's exactly what he did. With time running out, Stabler dashed Miami's hopes of a third consecutive title in dramatic fashion. There he is, fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's caught, he throws. It is. Oh, he caught it. He caught it. Oakland's 28 to 26 win evoked emotional extremes, characteristic of only the greatest of games. After the game, there was Don just crying, just letting it all out, crying and afterwards saying he was just so disappointed that for the guy's sake. But this is the one time in my life that I've seen him actually to sit down and let it let the tears flow for a, a disappointment. You'll never see a better game than this one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you'll agree. Frankly, it was maybe the greatest football game I have ever seen. It was just incredible.